beautiful day. Yes. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Yes. Amen. And such a thing for keeping us all week long from, amen, things that we do and things that we did not know. Amen. We thank God for how he just continues to sustain us. And so we do greet each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and those that are in our cyber sanctuary. As usual, if you are online, we do thank God for you supporting our uh, ministry and this broadcast. And we do ask that you would be so kind to uh, like the page if you have not did so already and to tag and to share. Let someone know that both World NBC Apex is on the air. Let's take it this time as we prepare, amen, for our opening selection. Amen. From our praise team, and you know, this is Holy Communion Sunday, so we ask that those that are in the cyber sanctuary, uh, perhaps if uh, you do not have your sacraments already prepared, if you will go ahead and do so, and get your bread and your uh, juice, uh, that you would be ready, that we will prepare for Holy Communion. And those that are in the sanctuary, uh, if you do not have your sacraments, you should have received them, but if you do not, by any chance, this is time you are excused. Um, uh, but if you do not have your sacraments, uh, by chance, if you would just lift your hand and signify to the usher that you uh, do not have them and she will make, uh, they will make sure that you are served. So it looks like all of us have our sacraments. Amen. So we're going to prepare to receive um, our opening selection. Amen. From our uh, praise team at this time. Let's help, let's help them as we go to the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence and sing. No need that the Lord be inside. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts of praise. Be thankful for us to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Uh, 
uh, that uh, that's something that we get, amen, when we come together with like-minded individuals, amen? Amen. amen. So this point in time, we're going to go into the Holy Communion, and we uh, pray that everyone have their sacraments again, if you do not, uh, we will be able to usher in, come and serve you, there's someone that does not have the sacraments, that is our partake of this one today, um, as we go into another uh, Lord's Supper, and we thank God that uh, this, will be, this will be the sixth time.
upon not only the people to come, that the Spirit of the Lord would come and change us, do what He can do with us, and that we will be more like Him. Anybody want to be more like Him? Amen. Want to walk like Him, talk like Him, and not be able to do
open heaven. Earth divinely invaded. Your house are lost. Miracles created. Declarations. Visitations. And divine manifestations. Position and promotion. Loans approved. Debt removed. Balance and restored marriage. Medical needs met. Attitudes adjustment.
everyone celebrating a special day in the month of June. Pastor Cobb would like to express his gratitude for all the robots that traveled with us on Sunday afternoon to the Haven Church. The Lord bless in that service. Our second quarter church business meeting will be held on Saturday, June 10th at 4 p.m. Pastor Cobb will be the guest preacher at Brian Chapel CME Church. The service will be held on Friday, June 16th at 7 p.m. The church is located at 256 Bridge Street in Duquesne, Maryland. <coughs> Reverend Karen Kozar is the pastor. Pastor Cobb will be the guest preacher at Israel Metropolitan CME Church for Pastor Courtney Adams' pastoral anniversary. This service will be held on Sunday, July 2nd at 10 a.m. The church is located at 307 North Calhoun Street, number 1709 in Greenville, South Carolina. All are welcome. If you are planning to attend, please inform Pastor Cobb as soon as possible. Casual Sundays are back. During the months of June through August, all worshipers are welcome to dress down and be comfortable, with the exception of our leadership team on first Sunday for Holy Communion. Men's Day 2023 will be held on Sunday, June 25th, during our Sunday worship service. Men, please remember your assessment. The Wake Missionary Baptist Association presents their annual usher's picnic on Saturday, June 17th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please see the weekly email for more information. Thought of the week. Faith sees the invisible, believe the unbelievable, and receive the impossible. These are your weekly observations. Amen. Let's give our media department a hand. Uh, if you all want, if you all want to give another selection, if you all want to, you can. If not, if we do, can someone do? I don't know if y'all have a song, but I, I just I'm expecting great things. Can somebody? I know it's not. Can somebody? Sister, Sister Cameron, is that your song? Yes, it is. Come on, Cameron. You can get, do it. Do it. Come on, that's how we got to do it. All right. Can y'all give a hand to see the song? I don't know what the song y'all are going to sing, so I didn't get a couple of hundred but I'm expecting some great things. Amen. Amen. So we, we, we want to bring that in the house of today. Amen. Amen.
Dustin and uh, also we thank God and wish a uh, happy birthday today to our Deacon Queen of Ray. Uh, at the uh, the depot plaza. 
uh, in uh, Apex 220 North Salem Street, Apex, and there'll be food trucks and vendors. Um, I'm going to do as best as I can. Don't let anything that's come to my attention at this time that will, uh, but let me just say, like, when we have our own, let's try to support them, uh, especially, uh, and we did receive an email from the town letting us know that um, that uh, uh, she will be a part of this, and we want to support her. We, we love her, we want to do what we can to support. So those that don't have anything to do, you don't have to stay from 11 to 6, but you can if you want to. Um, but I do think, we, and we're going to go into the message, um, that will with this oratorical, oratorical, excuse me, contest um, uh, will be so, back up, Juneteenth is on the, on the 16th. Uh, wait a minute, do I get my facts straight? The, the, well, the event is on the 16th and 17th. I believe Juneteenth, so I'm going to look it up, make sure I'm right. Is, I'm, I'm, I don't know the event, I'm the person with Juneteenth on the 16th, is that right? It's the 19th. 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 So it's the 19th, thank you. Um, but so this will be, uh, obviously going into, the prelude will be going into that. This will be the 16th and the 17th. So on the 16th will be the uh, oratorical contest. Let me get my back straight. From 6 to 7. Uh, at the Cultural Arts Center in Old Salem Street, all right? So that will be on the 16th, and then the Juneteenth celebration will be on the 17th from 11 to 6. And that is when the food truck and this will be there. Amen? All right, so I apologize for getting that mixed up, tangled up, but we will make sure that we uh, send it to you during the uh, weekly um, reminders uh, so that you may partake in that. So uh, if those that can't support, let's do that. And those that uh, cannot, let's just be in prayer that all will be well. Uh, as we know, suspended is a grow life, and we want to support that as best as we can. All right, so on last week, as we before said, we began in this series of talking about do you have uh, the Holy Ghost, and certainly uh, I, 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 the whole point of this is not to debate, amen, whether you, uh, what denomination you belong to, because at the end of the day, amen, in all denominations, uh, the reality is you got to be born again. you got to be saved, amen, to enter to the kingdom of heaven, amen? amen. Uh, and so let us go back into that uh, text from last week. We came from St. John chapter 14. St. John chapter 14, we began at the uh, 16th verse. Uh, now, if you're not too tired to stand, let's turn to John 14, 16 through 20. Uh, John 14, 16 through 20, and uh, then Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, John 14, 16 through 20. And from the King James, you got to say, I got it. You move too fast, they scroll to the book. You don't mind slowing down. Amen. Uh, St. John uh, chapter 14, verses 16 through 20, and then Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 13. Uh, and uh, I'll be reading the story from the King James Version. And it reads, and uh, this is Jesus. Uh, say here in St. John, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. You all do in other words, if you have another, you've already had one. Uh, that he may abide with you forever. Now, who was the first comforter? Do we know? Think about that. Who was the first comforter? If, if Jesus is saying, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Well, who is he referring to? The Holy Spirit. Well, we know that the Holy Spirit is going to come. But he says, no, look at this. Sometimes we miss over this. He shall give you another one. That he may abide with you forever. Think about that. Think about that. I'll come back to it. I don't, we ain't trying to, this ain't Jeff, so we ain't trying to get you. <laughs> Uh, but we do want to give consideration to the text. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, it seeth him not. This is why we say that the Holy Spirit is not a it, because it's a him. Yes. Him not. Neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with, where? With you. And shall be what? In you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Uh, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no, no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. In you. Say, uh, excuse me, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, uh, let's look at verses 1 for your consideration. Uh, and if you got it, say, I got it. And it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were all with them, or excuse me, they were all with one accord in one place. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We'll stop there. We did go through the 13th one last week. We want to, uh, if you want to listen to us, Lord Rickford, you may be released from your duty, Sister Jane. Uh, do you have the Holy Ghost? Uh, we talked about it last week how Pentecost is seven days, or excuse me, seven Sundays, seven weeks uh, from Easter. And when you include Easter, that gives you 50 days. 50 days after, amen, the Resurrection or Resurrection Sunday, uh, we find that that is Pentecost. Uh, 40 days after the Resurrection, Jesus ascends into heaven according to Acts chapter 1 through uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, 1 through 3. And on the 40th day, he instructs his disciples to go to a specific place. And that place was called what? Oh my. The upper room. Y'all with me today? So he instructs them to go to the upper room. And this is the same place on Monday Thursday that they had partaken of the Lord's Supper, which we know to be the last supper. Because he said he would not drink of the fruit of the vine again until we go into a, until we go into his kingdom. So therefore we understand uh, that that is why it's called the last supper, because the last time they would talk, partake of uh, the Lord's broken body or the Passover, excuse me, I shall not say, until we went, until we until we do it again in his kingdom. Now on that day, 40, uh, on the 40th day, they would go to the upper room, and for, and for 10 days, they would pray and wait for the power of the Holy Ghost. And the reason why we read St. John chapter 14 is because St. John is the prelude for Acts chapter 2. Because Jesus says in St. John 14, I will pray to the Father that he sends you another comforter that will not leave you. He will abide with you. How long? Forever. And so we see Acts chapter 2 is the fulfillment of John chapter 14. He says, I will ask the Father to give you another comforter, a helper, an a, a advocate, an, endless, an intercessor, a counselor, a strengthener, a, someone that's going to stand by you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot see and to take to its heart because it does not see or know him. The world does not know and understand the power of the Holy Ghost because they don't know who Jesus is. All right. Lord, for you, let me just say that. Uh, many times we want, uh, there are things that we want to receive, but then we forget the prerequisites. And the Holy Spirit, hear me when I say this, God loves us all, but the fact of the matter is, is the Holy Spirit is not for the unbeliever. It is for the believer. It is God's power. Think about that. It is the ruler, the breath of God that's inside of us. God sent himself back to us. And many people, uh, and we talked about this last week, how there's much confusion across the denominational lines as to what the Holy Ghost does, how you're supposed to get it, what it's supposed to make you do, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the bottom line is, is that the Holy Ghost, amen, regardless of whether you are Baptist, Methodist, uh, Episcopalian, or whatever you are, there are some things that bottom line, common denominator, the Holy Ghost gives us the ability to do and to become. And so we cannot allow, amen, religion and denominationalism. And again, uh, we respect this place, but this is what is happening by the Christ. Many people, because of uh, dogmatic teaching, uh, legalistic teaching, because of teaching that is more based on uh, what you think rather than the word of God, uh, many people have been misled because uh, we were talking about last week, the whole uh, controversy on speaking in tongues. It's one to speak in tongues uh, when you receive the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something. Uh, notice here in Acts chapter 2, and y'all say with me, uh, the Bible says that, he, that they spoke in tongues, get this, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So in other words, unless the Spirit is giving you utterance, you're not going to speak in that same tongue. And so there's much controversy. There are some denominations that will say, unless you, I, now I speak in tongues that the Spirit gives me, 
but that's a gift. And I don't force that on anyone else to say, you better speak in tongues or you're not saved. No. Because all of us don't have the same gifts. If you read, amen, the, the Bible helps us understand that, that, that when we understand who the Holy Ghost is, there are various gifts that Christ gave to the church. We look at the Godhead. There is uh, the work of the apostle. There's the work of the prophet. There's the work of the uh, evangelist. Or excuse me, yes, the evangelist. There's the work of the pastor. There's the work of the teacher. But then there are other gifts. Gifts of help. Gifts of administration. There are various gifts that have been given to the body of Christ. And sometimes we bind people to what we think. But beloved, now is the time for us to get out of what we think and to point people back to the word of God. And let me say this, it's not popular, it's not received, but this is why many people have left the church. It's because uh, they fell out with what uh, a church was teaching and, and in the bottom line, it was not rooted in the word of God. I don't care who you are. If you're going to a church that does not talk about the Holy Ghost, that does not talk about heaven, that does not talk about hell, you need to go somewhere else. Why? Because you got to have the Holy Ghost, amen, in order to get to heaven. Amen. And you got to understand that when this life is over, and I know all of us, we're just as good as we want to be, we're good as gold, we're buying for nothing, amen, because you're so rich, and you're so wealthy, and you're so beautiful, but the reality is all of us are going to leave Thank you. 
Christ. But can you imagine? Uh, all of a sudden, you're going out to eat. And boom! At the light. Who's driving that car? They're gone. Can you imagine? And I ain't going to imagine this part because it ain't going to be me. Uh, you in the bed with your spouse. And you getting up in the middle of the night and you in the bathroom. And you're wondering, why haven't I heard them story? Why haven't I heard them sleep? And when you, to your surprise, when you get up, you see that they're gone, but their clothes are still there. This is the way that it will be. And many times we don't teach about this, we don't preach about this, because it's not popular. Everybody wants houses, everybody wants cars, everybody wants new jobs. But child, are you going to heaven? Because at the end of the day, your job can't save you. They'll fire you and bring somebody else home before you have your funeral. But the fact of the matter is, only what you do for Christ is going to last. So we said that uh, there are four different types of tongues. Let me get through this. Uh, Paul says in verse Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, that there's the tongues of men and men and of angels. Then we talk about there was the unknown tongue in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2 through 4. Ah, uh, and then there was a new tongue in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, where he says, they shall speak with new tongues. And then according to Acts chapter 2, uh, there is the other tongue. Acts chapter 2, verse 4, the Amplified Classic Version says, and they were filled diffused from their soul with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression. And while we may not speak in the tongue of angels, uh, we may not speak in the unknown tongue, we may, we may not speak in other tongues, when you are converted, when you become a Christian, when Christ is abiding in your life, you ought to be able to say, I may not speak in those tongues, but I speak with a new tongue. Yeah. Why? Because the way I do the talk, I don't talk that way. And when I do slip up, the Holy Ghost convicts me and I get myself back in line. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Uh, and that's what we can bear witness to. Do you speak with a new tongue? Or are you still speaking with that same tongue you got? Before you got saved. Sad representation of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God's gift to the believer. And he can only be received by the believer. He can he, listen, he has the authority and power to move and to be felt by those who believe in Jesus and can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do we need him? Why is he important? Simply put, because he gives us power. Yeah. Gives you power. Before you raise your hand and slap, he'll bring it back down. Before you call him somebody. Before you tell them everything that you're thinking, he'll stop you and they say, you know, you, you can't even get your words out. If you let him abide in your life, he will direct and guide you. But the question is, do you want to be directed? Because some of us, If you are timid, let me tell you something. The devil, his demons, and demonettes are going to tear you asunder. But when you are saved and you are a believer and you know what Christ is in your life, you got to be bold. Bold in your confession. Bold in who you know Christ to be. You may not know everything about the word of God, but one thing that I do know is that I am saved. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, people will break up to you. How do you know you say? No, people even. Now, I remember I, 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 some years ago someone said to me, Well, you're supposed to be a Christian. You know, they'll say stuff like that. You're supposed to be a Christian. And my thing is, Well, if I'm not, if I am a Christian, and I'm not acting like how you think I should act, and I'm supposed to be one, what are you? Because if you see me and I'm not walking right, if you see me and I'm not talking right, then you're not having no Christ in your life to show me how to walk. And we spend so much time talking about what people, let me tell you something, when you get saved, somebody's going to always bring up your past. Bring up what you used to be, things you used to do. But child, when you get saved and get saved for real, you have the Lord to deliver you from your 
we haven't even heard of such a thing. There are many people that are walking defeated and they're powerless because they don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. So he first enables us to be a witness. What you talking about, God? I don't see that nowhere to take. Well, walk with me here. Ah, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 1. And let's look at uh, verses, verse number 8. Amen. If I'm going too fast, then the good thing is you can watch Facebook replay. Uh, it says here in the message version, he told them, you don't uh, get to know the time. Timing is the father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And get this, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be by what? Witnesses. The reason why the Holy Spirit, the whole reason for Pentecost is that when the Holy Ghost comes, it allows us to be a witness. A witness to the drug addict. A witness to the prostitute. A witness to the fornicator. A witness to the adulterer. A witness to the backslider. A witness to, I told him somebody, to the wicked witch of the West. He called you to be a witness. But you can't witness unless you walk in the light. Amen. Because sometimes people will try to get you to be in their room so you can do what they're doing. And have you not noticed, saints of God, that now the things that we held in high esteem, the world has flipped it. So we're now things like marriage. And everybody, like, we don't have no heavenly help for nobody in, but we, we do got to tell you the truth. Because the reality is, let me tell you now, let me tell you something. Homosexuality is not the only sin. But it is a sin. And have you noticed? Have you noticed that there's more homosexuals that honor marriage than it seems like the church does? Uh -huh. right. I know that it goes over, but I'm telling you. Because if you are a believer, sister, mm -hmm. you understand that you are too precious, you are too valuable to play house. When you are a believer, bro, you understand that time is too short for you saying, respect me, I'm the man of the house, but you don't want to put no ring on it. Uh, yeah. I ain't going to be believing this. And this is why we find out where the church at large will talk more about when you break up than they will when they celebrate you when you do stay together. We say the anniversaries and we. <laughs> but then if I, and which not I, but then if someone catch you on the corner and say, you know, guess who broke up? Yeah. Your first name is Childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm noticing something. There's a lot of marriages, and I'm praying for marriages because it's serious. The devil is trying his best to separate. And remove marriage from the life of believers. Amen. I'm looking at those people that post on Facebook all day long. They only do is just post, 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 and someone, oh, I'm not going to say that. But you don't have to, it's okay. Sometimes you want people to wonder what's going on in your house. Yeah. Why? Because what goes on in my house stays in my house. Right. And unless I invite you in, right. it ain't none of your business. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like some of us grew up with, if, if I don't care if 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 if, 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 if Deacon Quinn is having a birthday party and, 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 and she invite everybody else that don't invite and I know she ain't I know she ain't <laughs> and she invite everybody else that don't invite Pastor Cup. You know what we were raised to say, you know what? And then, then there's this chance that we you know we over here and we have the don't you hear that music in the background? We just have a good time and then, I mean this got all the everything going on the grill and this and the girl, we just have a good time and blah 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 and yada yada. Why don't you pull up? Some of us are raised old school. Unless you invite me, I ain't coming. And if you forgot, the person that called me, Sister Shannon, you can tell the Quinn to invite me. If she invite me, I may come. But you never invite someone else to somebody else's house because that's a loop you got. I was about to help me in this house. 
And some of us are going to places and into groups and territories that we have not been invited to. He says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you another comfort. Praise the Father. He allows you to say what you will. So, so first point is that he enables us to be able to say. He allows us to be able to, let me just, I, I did, okay, let me just go this other way. We need these points and we're going to get to this demonstration. Take that first point. Take that first point. Allows us to be a witness. What are the works of the Holy Spirit? First, that's what he It convicts us, or he convicts us of sin. St. John, I'm going to get through this quickly, so, so catch me. Uh, outside, how about that? Uh, St. John 16. <laughs> Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, St. John chapter 16, verse 18. And, and, uh, verse 8, excuse me. And it says this. Uh, from that part, that class verse, and when he comes, who is he? Holy Spirit. He will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, which is the uprightness of heart and right sin with God and about judgment. Do you not know that Satan is a deceiver of the whole wide world? And this is why we have deception going on and it's even crafted to the body of Christ because the Holy Spirit is not prevalent. But we see according to St. John chapter 16 verse 8, he will convict you of your sin. Nobody has to tell me, he'll tell me. Nobody has to call me out, he'll call me out. Nobody has to tell me I'm wrong, he'll tell me I'm wrong. And if he's really abiding in your life like you say he is, he won't let you sleep at night until you get that thing right. You have a situation? Yeah. A few, a few weeks, months ago, when me and my sister, we didn't even know, you know, no big, you know, drag out. Because we were raised right. But we didn't agree with each other. And we was at my mother's house and we didn't, you know, it kind of got a little bit more than what I intended. It, you know, you know, when it, and I don't say we ain't emotional. Because emotions will apply. Yeah. And I mean, and I think I've said this before. Uh, uh, but we left and uh, we didn't, you know, we won't go cussing that person, but it was a disagreement that was, should not have been. And on my way home, the Holy Spirit was just beating me, whooping me, and I mean, it was whooping me bad. So much so when I, um, I said, Lord, just let me get to the house. And by the time I got to the house, I texted my mother first because that was her house. And I told her to tell my stepfather that I apologize. Yeah, because see, if you know that in somebody else's house, yeah, and some of y'all might not love that, you do the same thing too. That's right, that's right. You can have a disagreement in front of somebody else. Right. But the only difference is some of us, we too big and too boastful to say that we sorry. Right. And that thing they went, so we apologize. And who but it was not appropriate. And so we apologized to the host of the house. And then I apologized to my sister. I didn't wait for her to come to me. Because whether she came to me or not, I, had to, I want the Holy Ghost to stop whooping me. So I had to get that thing off. Are you understand what I'm saying? He will convict you. Oh, I y'all don't scare to go to sleep. I know I've done something wrong. Because I may not wake up in the morning. So he convicts us of our sin. Of our sin. Secondly, he seals us for salvation. Amen. The seal is a representation of something that you think about when a seal is placed on something. That is the endorsement of that. The seal means that you are owned by God. And everything we need, he has it. The seal cannot be broken. We are sealed until the day of redemption. That's good news because in the midst of all we go through, guess what? If you say, God is keeping you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the, the glad tidings gospel of your salvation, and have believed in and adhered to and relied on him, but stamp of the seal of the long promised Holy Spirit. He dwells in us thirdly. First, he convicts us. Secondly, he seals us for salvation. Thirdly, he indwells us. Romans chapter 8, verse 11, from the living Bible translation. And if the Spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead lives in you, he will make your dying bodies live again after you die. And I thought about this. If this scripture is true, 
So he says the same spirit that quickens our own bodies is what's going to happen. Our dying bodies is going to allow us to live after we die. So if you don't have that power, then my question to you today is how are you going to get up? <laughs> I'm preaching better than some of y'all respond. Ah, or he teaches us. He teaches us. Let me, let me, let me, let me get off of this. Ah, uh, 14, 26. Living Bible translation says, but when the Father sends a comfort, instead of me by the comfort, I mean the Holy Spirit, he will teach you as well as remind you of everything I myself have told you. Is it Pastor Carl telling you? Because the pastor didn't preach, so he must ain't talking about me. Whether well, Pastor Carl preaching or not, you know where you are in Christ. You know where you are. But the pastor ain't preaching on that yet, so I can keep on doing it. Uh-uh. Don't wait to come across the pulpit. If you know, then do that. So he, he yeah, we gotta clap that. Yeah, we gotta clap that because he teaches us. He is a teacher. But the question is, are you showing up for class?
We're trying. I know some of y'all can't see this tree. Some of y'all can't. Some of you can't see it. We're, we're, we're trying our best to get along in this thing called called life. Some of us, we can say, we treat people right. We try to do the best we can to help out our neighbors. Try to help people that don't love us back. Try to turn the other cheek. Because if you have to turn the other cheek, Try to give as often as we can. But the problem is, the reason why you're so exhausted is because you're trying to do it by yourself. You must have the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going we're gonna to close in this part two, like this today. Now I have some cups. Twenty cups, which represents, and I'm talking about me today. I ain't talking about you, right? Because many times here we are without gifts and our talents. Look at him with his anointed self. Uh, he's a great preacher and all this. Uh, he's a great father, husband. That's still thank you, wonderful. But unless you have the Holy Ghost, you'll find yourself. Running on fumes. And when you run on fumes, you are a ticking time bomb. And sometimes we consult with family and friends out of goodness of our heart. But the reality is that sometimes that family and friends can't really help you. Amen. They can try to give you advice. But truth be told, Mother Daddy, until they've been where you are, they really don't know how you feel. Right. Right. We talked yesterday about anxiety and I'm sharing uh, with one that people are getting enough kids when I start having anxiety issues. Somebody told me, well, you just get over it. And I'm sharing on yesterday, you don't know what it feels like to have anxiety attack until you have one. When you think that you're dying and, and you don't know what's going on, you can't, until you've been there, you don't know. And this time we try to speak on things that we really should not be speaking on. And that's the problem. Some of you take advice from wrong folks. You say, and the Bible says in Psalms 1, blessed man that walketh not in the counsel of God. If you is, you're desiring a marriage, and you, 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 your, your mentor is somebody that can't get a man. Are desiring marriage, and, and you're consoling with someone uh, uh, that's been married ten times. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Here you are, child. I just want to. I just want to be able to hear more in the church, and you consoling with somebody that don't even pay tithes. We consult with the Lord, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit when He comes, He will lead us and guide us into what all truth. So what happens in life, Shannon, is, is we pour out. We pour out because, you know, family needs us. We pour out. We pour out because we got loved ones that died, so we still deal with the grief. We pour out because uh, we got to make sure that because these are crazy folks out here. That our children understand that they are, and let me tell you something, if you're not showing your children that they are loved, then you need to step up. That's right. So you gotta show your children that 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 um, hold on, hold on, hold on. That, you, that you love them. So you gotta spend time. Can't be an absent dad. Didn't be dad. Mean mom. Take your time. Then there comes the church. Pastor, what do you Gotta figure out what we're gonna do in the winter. The last one must have done. Who, who, who gonna teach next week? Who gonna preach for the revival? Y'all see? 
And, 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 and not just, so we got family, we got church, and we got here an absence of community. Try to show that community it is. Let the community know that you are engaged. This family, everything important. Oh, that's this because green. I didn't have a green open before. That's me. Trying to maintain my sanity. I'm talking to somebody there. Hurting you, 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 you're bleeding, but you, 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 you can't find words. Mm. So we just stand and pour out because that's what we're supposed to do. Take time on yourself. Try to, try, try to pound yourself. Let me go get a pound you. Here comes the truck again. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you here? So, so, so we're going out. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We got a community. We got a town council meeting. We be here tonight. Still going out. Wait a minute. My job is acting crazy. The supervisor taught me little field. I'm trying to keep yourself sane because you know we need a paycheck. Pour out, 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 pour out. Y'all see what's happening to this picture? You see what? Well, wait a minute. This is blue. Blue, blue represents church. How? Well, what do you need? Where? I'm doing all this. Pour it out. And this ain't just for me. I'm trying to get somebody to but we need a word. We, we, we need a word. We need a word. The mic ain't ain't working. And here I am. And it's just February. <laughs> oh, but but wait a minute. I still got. Oh, wait a minute. That's the, the, the meeting that we have with the town manager and the mayor.
desire for all of us, every one of you, every one of you to get this point. When you got nothing left. And anybody sitting there looking at what you're doing, because they all looking at what more can I get? Yeah. Look at what more can I get? All right, is there anything else we can do? And the only way, the only way, there's only one way. Let me just say one way. One way. One way. That you can't feel back up again. Let's bow our hands. Here's about our eyes across. Father, thank you. That you can feel us up again. Thank you. For prayer and for consecration. Thank you for the ability to talk to you. Thank you, God, that you are present here in the time trial. Thank you, God, that you are the great I am. Thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, God, that you are our provider. Thank you, God, that you're everything that we need you to be. Everything we need yeah. is in you. Yeah. Now, thank you for being our way yeah. Thank you, God, for being our healer. Thank you, God, for being present. Yeah. God, I ask you right now, Lord, we deep in the storm. When we're torn down, it feels back again. Help us to read the word, hide it in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. In Jesus' name, let the church stand you. Amen. Now, now you notice something? When you go back to God, and you seek him in prayer and consecration,